We are forever grateful for God's goodness to all of us. Again, we thank God for the years of labor and the years of dedication and the years of work put forth by Bishop Ferguson and all of the brothers and sisters here in the Bahama Islands. We thank God for all of you. We thank God for your faithfulness. We thank God for your dedication. The purpose of church is to prepare us to meet God. The purpose of church. Many people don't know or have never been informed about the purpose of church. Most people go to church because it's Sunday out of routine or habit. You have those that go to church on Saturday. Some have made it routine or habit. But just as men and women go to a supermarket, no one go to a supermarket to socialize. They don't go to the supermarket to meet friends. You go to the supermarket to buy what you need because without food, your natural body will die. You take a person who went too long without eating, their body don't function the same. In fact, they don't even think clearly. Body may become jittery and sometimes lack of nutrition affects the vision and capacity to think rationally. I want to call your attention to Acts of the Apostles chapter 20. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost in the book of scriptures plainly states mm -hmm. the purpose of God's church. That's right. I want everybody to hear me and follow me. God willing, we're going to try not to hold you too long, but I want you to listen and listen well. All right. In the book of Acts chapter 20, we're at verse 28. Yes. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves. Pay attention to yourselves. And to all the flock. Now, the apostle is advising the ministers. Don't just look at the people, and this is what most churches do. But you first have to look at self before you look at people. That's right. Notice what the Bible says here. Take heed, therefore, Take heed, therefore unto, unto yourselves, yourselves and to all the flock. And then look at the people. Over the over which the, which the Holy Ghost hath made God you overseers. Have given you the oversight for what reason? To feed the church of God. Mm. Mm. Do you hear this? Amen. Give the minister the oversight for what reason? To feed the church of God. How did the church come about? Which he hath purchased with his own blood. That's why I tell folk the church is not mine. That's right. I didn't shed a drop of blood to get a church. I admit, I've been cut. <laughs> Amen. I've had injuries and bled, but uh, it wasn't for you. That's right. I bled because of injury. That's right. Jesus shed blood to buy a people. Mm -hmm. Now, we belong to God. And if we belong to God, don't he got the right to tell you what you are allowed to do and what you are not allowed to do? What? If you belong to God, God can tell you where to go, where not to go, who to be around, who he don't want you to be around, what to say, what not to say, what to listen to, what not to listen to. So I want to say, well, Pastor Jennings, you make it seem like God is controlling. He is. That's right. Glory to God. That's right. He is. He's a controlling God. Mm -hmm. If God didn't control the universe, all the elements of heaven will get out of place. That's right. The sun rise and set by God's permission. The moon have its appointed time by God's permission. Everything in the universe functions according to the order of God. 
That's right. When God made the fowls of the air, the beasts of the fields, there's not a creature that God made from the animal world that ever gave God problems. God ain't never had a problem until he made man. That's right. Ever since he made hell bound, hard head, rebellious, self-righteous, arrogant, stubborn, self-centered, lack of humility, man. You don't read where it says they repented God for making cows. No. <laughs> you don't see where it says they repented God for making goats. <laughs> Or repented God for making birds. No. God ain't never repented for nothing. No. But after he made man. Mm -hmm. The word of God plainly states. And God looked upon the earth. Listen. In the book of Genesis chapter 6 and at verse 12. Follow me. And God looked God upon the earth. Looked upon the earth. And behold it was corrupt. It was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. All flesh mm -hmm. had corrupted his way upon the earth. Yes. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh the is end of all me. flesh is come up before him. For the earth is filled with violence through them. The earth. And Noah's day were filled with violence and it's filled with violence now. And the book says it repented God. That's right. For making man, man mm -hmm. that grieve God. So God come along manifesting himself in flesh to give man teaching. He didn't want to hear the prophets. He don't want to hear them now. Right. Didn't want to hear the apostles. Don't want to hear them now. Don't want to hear the scriptures. You know, people don't mind reading the Bible. They don't get hurt that much. Right. But to hear the Bible truly preached, it hurts, it hurts them and it offends them. Listen at this. Back in Acts 20 and verse 28. All right. Take heed therefore unto yourself. All right, Bahamas and you that are listening and watching, pay attention to yourself. And to all the flock. And to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. What is the purpose of the church? To feed the church of God. That's why I'm here. And that's why we travel everywhere else. That's why Bishop Ferguson is here in the Bahamas. That's why the ministers labor in other part of the Bahamas. For what reason? To feed the church of God. You come to church to get fed. That's right. If you're not getting fed God's word, I don't care how much you speak in tongue, you can speak in tongue until you make the carpet roll in your mouth. Amen. When you spit the fibers of the carpet out, if you're not getting fed God's word, you will be lost even with the Holy Ghost. That's right. Just like it takes natural food to fuel your natural body, it takes the teaching of God's everlasting word to fuel your dying soul. But he answered and said, it is written. Listen. In the book of St. Matthew chapter 4 and at verse 4. It is written. But he answered and said, it is written, man, man shall not live. Shall not live. By bread alone. How do the church survive? But by every word. How much? By every word. I have to preach Everything. That's right. I don't care if you don't like it. If you get mad, get upset, throw up, throw Bibles, throw handkerchiefs, throw stones, death threats. When the smoke clear, the Bible says you got to live by, by every, every word, word that proceeds. Everything that God say, you got to hear it. Everything that God say, you got to obey it, That's right. even if you don't like it. That's right. If the job of the preacher is to feed the church then the preacher is to never, never, never be concerned whether you like what he preach. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. The preacher is not to be concerned at all. I don't care who don't like what we preach. I don't care if you hate it, if you walk around the streets with picket signs. I don't care. I'll, I'll invite you in here with your sign in your chair. That's right. And when the sign is done, you got to live by every, every word. word. Every now, word. this is the problem with church. 
You singing, you jumping, you shouting, you hollering, you running around the church, prancing around, skipping and shouting, and preachers just slapping their dirty hands on you. You're falling on the floor, rolling around like a roach about to die. That's right. With no word. That's right. You know, the Bible called the scriptures meat. And women that know about cooking, there's a certain type of hammer looking object. They have like needles, points on the end. Yes. Meat tenderizer. That woman take that hammer looking thing, she beat the meat. Tenderizer. That's right. Well, tenderizing meat starts before you buy it. That's right. For a tenderizing meat starts with the diet of the animal. Mm -hmm. Depending whether the animal eat grain or grass determines the tenderness or the toughness of the meat. That's right. Now, the word of God is a very tough meat. Oh, yeah. Meats for the belly. Glory to God. Do you hear this? In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and at verse 13. Follow me. Meats for the belly. Meats for the belly. And the belly for meats. You better go at the verse up above that. Verse 12. Mm. Listen. All things are lawful unto me. All things are lawful unto me. But all things are not but expedient. But all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me. Yes. But I will not be brought under the power of any. What is it? Meats for the belly. Meats for the belly. And the belly for meat. Now the word of God is meat. Oh yes. And the word of God must be served well done. That's right. No medium rare teaching here. That's right. No medium rare gospel. Mm -hmm. It must be well done. That's why you got to cook the church <laughs> with the flame of scripture. That's right. Eh? That's right. You get what I'm telling you? Mm -hmm. You see, the Holy Ghost is fire. It's not my word. Look, look at, do you hear how the Bible have it so plain? In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23 and at verse 29. Look at God talking. Is not my word. Is not my word. Like as fire. Like as fire. Saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. And, and like a hammer. Wait a minute. Amen. You see, Williams is holding the instrument that's designed to tenderize your meat. That's right. And to That's cook right. it. That's right. We have meat tenderizer and we have flame to burn you good fashion. It's not my word. You see, when you're in a false church, in a false religion, you're not well done. That's right. Mm -hmm. You're medium rare. That's right. Not well done. That's why you get offended when sound, strong, hard, tight <laughs> preaching take place. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Hey Amen. You see, when, when, when you're medium rare, when you got a medium rare religion, women are preaching. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. That's a medium rare teaching. Mm -hmm. When you got medium rare teaching, you got three gods in heaven. Yes. When you got a medium rare teaching, you got same sex marriages. When you got medium rare teaching, you can divorce and remarry. When you got medium rare teaching, you live together, not married. Right. When you got medium rare teaching, you have boyfriends and girlfriends and fornicate all day and all night and then come to church on Sunday and think you've done God a favor. Right. Am I right, I said? Right. When you got medium rare teaching, you young men walk around with your pants hanging down, showing your underwear. You see, that's medium rare teaching. Right. When you got medium rare teaching, the preacher don't care about your soul. He just care about your wallet and care about your money. Right. Are you getting what I'm talking? Hallelujah. Do you hear what the word of God says? It's not my word. Get Bible in chapter and verse for this. Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 29. It's not my word. My word. Like God. God personalizing it. My word. My word. My word. Not the words of men. That's right. I don't give two cents about the words of men. That's right. That's why I don't look at and honor no man who brag about he went to seminary school. I don't care what school you've been to. School don't make preachers. Amen. Holy Ghost make preachers. That's right. 
Are you getting what I'm telling you? It's not my word. When you hear these men got a PhD in DD, that don't make you a preacher. No. You got all these degrees like you got a fever, Amen. like a thermometer. That don't mean nothing. <laughs> Seminary school men don't preach the word. No. Their objective of preaching is not designed to save your soul. Their objective of preaching is to entertain you and to make you excited, not to give you insight. That's why if you look at any seminary school preacher, he don't even preach with his normal voice. He get up, let the church say man. Uh, uh, say man again. I was glad when he said unto me, yeah, yeah, let us go. And I let I said. He's not a preacher. He's a performer. And this performing hypocrisy has contaminated church and you became weaker and weaker and the preacher became richer and richer. My job as a preacher is to prepare you to meet God and stay out of hell. Right. It's heaven or hell for the Bahama Islands. Right. There's nothing else. Yeah. I don't care how cute you are if you got more curves than all the hills of this island. Oh, yes. You're going to die one day oh, yeah. and the worm's going to wrap around your hips tighter than your skirt. That's right. You young man that think you're God's gift to every woman to fornicate with. You only got a short time to be a fool. That's right. You're going to stand before God and you're going to give an account to God for the deeds done in your body. It's not my word. Do you hear God talking? In Jeremiah 23 and verse 29. God said, it's not my word. My word. Like as a fine. That's why no preacher is telling the truth when he put on his church, he's the founder. That's right. Any preacher have on his church, he's the founder. That's a lie and a direct challenge to scripture. That's right. Jesus said upon this rock, I'll build my, my church. My church. That's right. So if Jesus declared the church, church. to be his, where was you when he started the church? Amen. You're nothing but a guest in his church. That's truth. And you can't even get in God's church without his permission. That's right. What put you in the church? The Holy Ghost put you in here. That's it. The Bible says you're baptized by one spirit into one body. Amen. Is not my word like a fire? Fire. Fire, saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. And like a hammer. And like a hammer. That breaketh the rock in pieces. That break what? The rock in pieces. Hey, glory to God. Amen. We have a hard gospel. Oh, yes. Don't spare us nobody. I'm not out for money, not out for popularity. I can preach free. Oh, yes. Not attached to no board of directors. I ain't attached to no one putting a cap on my check. I work. That's right. I got a job. I can come to Bahamas and anywhere else and kill you gladly. That's right. And don't worry about your money. When I come and travel, I don't get no speakers offered. No. And then nobody want to give you money for hurting their feelings. <laughs> no, no. Huh? No, no. We come free, leave free, and put you on a straight path to obey God. That's right. Now, go back to the book of Acts of the Apostles. Back in Acts Give 20. Give chapter and verse and let's itemize the purpose of church. Back in Acts chapter 20 and verse 28. Follow me. Take heed therefore unto <coughs> yourselves. Pay attention unto yourselves. And to all the flock. And to all the flock. Over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. What is the job of the ministers in the pulpit? To feed the church of God. To do what? Feed the church of God. To do what? Feed the church of God. The question is are you being fed today? And if you say yes, what are you eating? That's right. That's it. Most, <clears throat> many children who are spoiled, parents give them a bunch of sweets, mm -hmm. sugar, yeah. lollipop, or when that child begins to grow, it don't like greens, yeah. so the mother mix the greens with applesauce That's right. to make it sweet. That's right. To lure the child into eating. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> huh? Amen. That's the purpose of it. That's right. You mix it with applesauce to lure the child into eating. Mm -hmm. The preacher 
is not to mix no. scripture with theology. No. He is not to mix scripture with philosophy. That's right. He is not to mix scripture with his personal views. That's right. He is not to mix scripture with his own opinion. That's right. He is not to mix scripture with his own agenda. Amen. The scriptures is pure. Pure. Not to be mixed. That's right. Integrated. Not to add, nor to take away from. That's right. Give me the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelation, chapter 22. Chapter 22, and begin at verse 16. 16. I, Jesus. What? I, Jesus. Well, that lets you know who's talking here. That's right. I, Jesus. I have sent mine angel. Where? To testify unto you these things. Hold it. Testified where? In the churches. We're right back at church again. That's right. What is the angel? I am the... Hold it. Mm -hmm. The angel. You have the angels of heaven. And you have angels born of women. That's right. What do you mean? Angel just simply mean messenger. That's right. And the scripture says about attaining angels unaware, meaning you can be attaining a man of God or a servant of God and don't even know it. That's right. Not even aware of it. That's right. So the angel was sent with the message to the church. Mm -hmm. That's what? I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things uh -huh. in the church. What is it? I am the root and the offspring of David. I am the root David. and the offspring of David. Jesus letting you know what line he come from. That's right. Come from the house of David out of the town of Bethlehem where David was. Come from the tribe of Judah who was one of the sons of Jacob. Amen. So he come on out of the tribe of Judah from the house of David. That's why Jesus is called son of man. That's right. Son of man means son of a prophet. Son of a prophet. Well, who was the father of this prophet? David was. For the Bible says that he come of the throne of his father David. There shall be no end. The house that Jesus came out of, David was the father of that house. That's right. Listen. I am the root and the offspring of David. And, and the bright and morning star. What else? And the spirit and the bride say come. The spirit and the church. The church is the bride. That's right. God calls the world to come to him through the church. And the spirit. The spirit. And the bride. And the bride. Say come. Say come. And let him that heareth let say come. Let him that listen you come. And let him that is a thirst come. If you're thirsty, come. And whosoever will. What? Let him take the water of life freely. What did he say? I testify. Look right here. Revelation 22 and verse 18. I testify unto every man. That heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If what? If any man shall add unto these things. What will God do to him? God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Hold it. This is where churches have drifted away from scripture policy. Mm. God's word is good enough for us. That's right. That's right. But because men are afraid to uh, offend, they don't want to offend their wife, they don't want to offend their sons and daughters, they don't want to offend their blood brothers and their mama and they slap happy grandpappy. Mm -hmm. the, preachers, the preachers don't want to offend his second wife. That's right. He don't want to offend his congregational girlfriend. That's right. Am I right? That's right. That's right. And because he don't want to offend, there are certain subjects he will not touch. From which some having swerved. What? From which some having Get swerved. Get verse for this. In 1 Timothy chapter 1 and we're at verse 6. What is it? From which some having swerved. Get at verse 5. At verse 5. Uh -huh. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart. What else? And of a good conscience. And, and of faith unfeigned. What else? From which some having swerved. Some have swerved. You know sometimes when you're driving, there's something in the road that catch you off guard. You got to swerve and go around it. That's right. The word of God is here and many have swerved and went right around it. That's right. They are confronted with the Bible, but they're so stubborn and they are so loyal to their organization. Let me say this to all of you that are here and you that are watching around the world. There should not be no organization that have your loyalty more than God. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. There shouldn't be an organization under the sun that you're more loyal to than God himself. Anytime you truly stand for God and the organization you're in get wrong, if you are of God, you will fight against the organization. That's right.
Oh yes, you will. Oh yes, you will. Listen. From which some, having swerved, they have swerved, have turned aside, turned aside unto vain jangling, unto vain jangling, desiring a, to be a, teachers, a bunch of nothingness. That's right. They desire to be pre to be teachers of the law, of the law, understanding neither what they say. They don't have a clue of what they're talking about, nor whereof they affirm. So this is how men have added. That's right. To the scriptures. This is why you have junior elders, mm -hmm. junior bishop, junior. Apostles, junior deacons, deaconess. Yeah. You're not even a junior hypocrite. You're just a hypocrite. That's right. They have added. If any man shall add the unto Bible these said, things, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Listen, give me Ephesians 4 11 Ephesians and give me 1 Corinthians 12 28. Amen. Let's get the officers of the church. In Ephesians and let's chapter look, 4. Let's look how they have added. We are working on where the apostle taught if you add to these Amen. things, God shall add unto them the plagues that are written in the book, and then we'll show you what they took out the church. That's right. All right, because the Bible dealing with adding and take away. That's right. All right. First in Ephesians chapter 4 and at verse 11. Follow me. And he gave some apostles. Wait a minute. That's what God put in the church. Mm -hmm. He gave some apostles and some prophets, some prophets and some evangelists. An apostle was one that God called, God sent, God anointed, God instructed. You can't lay hands on a man or ordain him an apostle. No. Some folks say, well, only to be an apostle, you had to walk with Jesus in the flesh. That's a lie. The That's apostle lie. Paul didn't walk with him in the flesh. No, he didn't. Paul walked with him in the spirit. By the time Paul came along, Jesus been died and rose and ascended above all heavens. That's right. All right. And he gave some apostles. He gave some apostles. And some prophets. Some prophets. And some evangelists. Some evangelists. And some pastors. Some pastors. And teachers. Teachers. For. For what? The perfecting of the saints. What else? For the work of the ministry. What else? For the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, look at the church have added to that. Mm -hmm. The Bible said he gave some apostles. Some apostles. What else? And some prophets. Some prophets. And some evangelists. Now, what the churches have added to that, they got women evangelists now. Right. Then they lie on the daughters of Philip and said Philip had four daughters that were evangelists. You old liars. That's right. You religious fakers. The Bible ain't never said that. No. He said he had four daughters that was prophetess. Prophesied. They weren't Prophets. walking around evangelizing and laying hands on people. The pastor's wife is the assistant pastor, which is a bundle of trash from the pits of hell. That's right. Are you listening? And he gave some apostles. He gave some. Some apostles. Some. Some. Not all, some apostles. And some prophets. Some prophets. A prophet is, listen, a prophet is a messenger of God who tell the four events that's going to come. That's right. And the way you can tell that he's a false prophet is when he speak by his own will, by his own permission, and everything he said, none of it come to pass. That's right. It's amazing how the Lord only talked to these devils during offering time. Amen. Have you noticed that? You go to any old church that's half baked and half done and medium rare. The only time a man feel the Lord talking to him is when the plate is being passed around. Right. Once that plate is gone around and when he see he ain't got enough, right away he get in the fake tongue. He the Lord just spoke to me and told me to tell you there's five more thousands in the house. And the Lord said, if you give that money, he yabba dabba do what you're going to do. And you church suckers. Church suckers. Fall for that hypocrisy. And that's the blessing plan. The blessing plan is plain and simple. The plan is get your money. The blessing is he got your money. That's right. So the only one that get blessed from the plan is the preacher. That's right. Are you listening to the old troublemaker? And he gave some apostles. He gave some apostles. And some prophets. Some prophets. And some evangelists. Some evangelists. And some pastors. Some pastors. Now. Not the preacher is a pastor or a shepherd and his wife is assistant shepherd. No, no. no. You got to keep it in the order of the doctrine of the apostles. That's right. Now, the doctrine of the apostles contradicts every organization. That's right. Any organization started by man, built by man, and promotes the theory of man will always be in contradiction of God everlasting word. That's right. Listen. And some pastors. Some pastors. And teachers. Teachers. For the perfecting of the saints. Wait a minute. 
These officers were put in the church for what reason? For the perfecting of the saints. When a thing is perfect, it's, it's, it's uh, correct. Right. When it's perfect, it's complete. Mm -hmm. In order for the church to get complete, it take all these officers. That's right. You got to have all these officers functioning in the capacity that's outlined in God's word. No junior, no junior apostle. No. No, 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 no junior. Yeah. He ain't got no been being no junior nowhere on the Bahama Islands. That's right. Or nowhere in America or nowhere in Europe. No junior elders, none of that foolishness. No. So this is where religion and organizations have added. Added. And the Apostle John tells us in Revelation 22, 18. If any man shall add unto these things. If you add. Any man. If you add. If any man shall add unto these if things. If you add everything that's in that Bible, leave it like it is. That's it. If they was all filled with the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, with the evidence of speaking in tongue at the Spirit of God, give utterance, they don't need for you to add another method of receiving the Holy Ghost other than speaking in tongue. That's right. You walking around here, well, I ain't never spoken in tongue. I, I got the Holy Ghost. The only ghost you got in you is the devil himself. Amen. Now, some preachers got a bishop ghost. Mm. Not the Holy Ghost. <laughs> bishop ghost. What do you mean bishop ghost? They only can feel the presence of God when they bishop talk. That's right. That, in other words, if Bishop Ferguson is speaking from God's word, I mean lined up 100% yeah. from God's word then the Holy Ghost in you will agree to God's word. That's right. But if the people's favorite preacher, <laughs> the people's preacher, That's right. so you have God's preacher and you got the people's preacher. Yeah. And the people's preacher, he don't preach nothing to offend you. He don't preach nothing to hurt you. This is how you can tell a people's preacher. Most time before he sit down from faking <laughs> what he called preaching, he going to apologize to you for what he said. He'll tell you, church, I'm sorry if I hurt any of you. If I offended any of you, I apologize. That's the devil's preacher. That's right. God's preacher don't care if he beats you in the ground with the Bible. That's right. God says, preach the word. Preach the word. God didn't say, look at how you feel. No, no. If your wife don't sleep with you that night as a result of the message, then let your bed become anarchica. But you preach the word. Preach the word. Any time a preacher's wife dictates the pulpit, you're following a false prophet. That's right. The preacher wife have no say so about God's church. That's right. The Bible speaks plain in the 20th chapter of Acts, over which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers feed the church to of God. feed the church of God. Feed the, feed church, the of God. church of God. Feed the Hallelujah. church of God. Feed them. Feed. That's right. Not cry on your wife because the church won't cooperate. <laughs> feed them. Feed. That's right. If they all get up and walk out, go behind them and feed them feed. while they leave. That's right. Right. Are you listening to the old man? Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves. Pay attention, I say. To yourselves. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God unto yourself. And to all the flock. And to all the followers. Over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. The purpose of God putting ministers in the church is for what reason? To feed the church of God. Do what? Feed the church of God. That's why the churches are starving. That's right. God's people, churches, God's people. weak, That's right. starving. Yeah. They have more entertainment in the church than God in the church. That's right. The churches now have become clubs. Yeah. Praise dancers all on the stage. Half-naked women. Yeah. Half-gay men. That's right. 
preachers who pimp the people. Yeah. Don't preach to the people. They pimp the people. Amen. Only thing the Lord tell them is how to get rich. Mm -hmm. Look at your neighbor next to you. Look at your neighbor next to you. Say, neighbor, it's your time. <laughs> Turn to your left. Look at the neighbor next to you. Look at the neighbor next to you. Say, neighbor, you're the devil. <laughs> Amen. That's right. How did church get this bad? That's right. How did you get this wicked until the so-called church people... It ain't no different than the way you are than your past life of a sinner. Of a sinner. That's right. Christians smoking. Yeah. Christian drinking. Yeah. Christian partying. That's right. The Christian preacher got two and three wives. Amen. Am I right? That's right. That's right. The preacher knock up the women in the church and got several women pregnant. Amen. Or the preacher got to pay some women off so they can shut up in church. That's right. Talk back to me. Amen. Amen. What is the purpose of the church? To feed the church of God. Feed them. Feed the church of God. We travel to Africa and Europe and India and America and Canada and throughout the Caribbean feeding them. Feet, that's right. I don't travel to make friends with nobody. That's right. No, sir. I travel to feed you. Feet, that's right. I ain't come to Bahamas to make friends with nobody. Amen. We come to feed you. Jesus is coming. That's right. Now go with the God. That's right. Jesus Amen. is coming. Oh, yes. Oh, and the church is not ready. You're not ready for the coming of the Lord. No, no. Give me the fifth chapter of the book, book of Ephesians. Ephesians. That's right. The pulpits are not ready. Amen. For the coming of the Lord. Amen. Listen at this. In the book of Ephesians chapter 5 and at verse 26. Come on, son. That he might sanctify. That he may sanctify. And cleanse it. You know, when I came up, used to hear old heads say, I go to a holy sanctified church. Yeah. Sanctification is an obsolete term now in church. Oh, yeah. You used to hear old folks say, I'm holy and sanctified. That's right. Sanctified means you're set apart. Yeah. But look at your churches now. What you set apart for? <laughs> you party. You dance. You live together, not married. The preachers justify divorce and remarriage. That's right. The preachers are so weak, they get up in line and say, the Lord told me it's time for me to have my second wife. Yeah. Two wild deacons. Two wives, trustees, single sisters on a choir with brashing marks all around their neck, down their breast. The preacher don't say nothing because he the one put it on her. That's right. That's right. Do you hear what the word of God says? That he might sanctify. God's church is a sanctified church. Amen. You look at the people today, they say they of God. You can't tell them no difference. No. Whether they're going to church or going to a club. That's right. The women in church, your breasts hanging out. Yeah. Your clothes is cut deeper than my jacket. Yeah. The pastor's wife looked like a neighborhood hooker. That's right. Am I right? That's right. Old folks used to say you look like Jezebel. Yeah. Am I right, I said? Amen. This is holy, sanctified, sanctified teaching. This is the type of teaching that churches have become so modern, they say, well, this is an educated society and we're living in the 21st century. And we find that this type of teaching is, uh, is somewhat primitive. All you need to do is go to seminary school and come up with a few PhDs and DDs so you can uh, uh, escalate to the people. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Amen. A bunch of educated fools. Fools. God don't give two cents about your degrees. No. God don't give two cents about the size of your house. Oh, no. And he don't care about the size of your church. And God don't give two cents about your bankroll. Who's more richer than him? That's right. Your celebrity status means nothing to God. Amen. Nugget, you came in the world. Nugget, you shall return. return. 
So you drinking Christians. <laughs> you partying Christians. Mm. You cigarette sucking and joint suckers and reefer sucking Christians. That's right. Who is your God? No, I know the preacher tell you God ain't looking at your outward. He looking at the heart, and that's a lie. God look at the outward, and he look at the heart, because when the heart get it right, everything on the outside falls in place. That's right. The word of God says what? That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself. God is coming for what? That he might present it to himself. He may present the church to himself. A glorious church. What kind? And not having spot. What? Not having spot. Not having spot. Anyone who get themselves dressed, they uh, inspect their clothes. That's right. Because they want to be presentable. That's right. God is inspecting our lives. Oh, yeah. Because when he come, he wanted to be presentable. Mm -hmm. And your life got to be presentable. In other words, it got to be right in his eyes, not yours. That's right. Do, you, do we understand this? That's right. Because the Bible says there's a way that seems right unto man, but the end there runs with the ways of death. What may seem right to you may be wrong in the eyes of God. Oh, yeah. This is why nobody should approach the Bible with your personal feelings. That's right. And your personal views. Yeah. If God said something, you got to do it. Amen. Anytime God said something and a preacher said, well, it, it doesn't matter. That's where these modern Christians are. It doesn't matter. You know, I'm saved regardless. It ain't no one saved unless your salvation measure up to that book. That's it. Because you go to church and be moved by a song, a song can make a monkey jump. Oh, yeah. A song can make a snake weave and bow. That's right. You, can, you, you ain't going to be saved by a song. No. Only thing save you is God's word being preached. That's it. Listen. That he might present it to himself. What kind? A glorious church. Not having what? Not having spot. What else? Or wrinkle. Hold it right there. When there's a wrinkle, something is out of place. Yeah. There's certain material that hold wrinkles more than others. Oh, yeah. So when you iron that material, sometimes you got to apply more steam. That's right. Yeah. More heat. You press that button and that iron, whoosh. <laughs> that's a stubborn wrinkle. That's right. There are many things that's out of place in church. Yeah. And the preachers are so stubborn, I got to take the iron of the scriptures and force scriptural steam on it. That's right. And, and to get all the wrinkles out, look at your life. Mm -hmm. Look at your life. Yeah. If the Lord came right now, can you honestly say you will make the first resurrection? Lord. Or will you go to hell? Lord. If the Lord came now, it's 10 minutes to one. Can you honestly say you are ready to go back with him? My Lord. Or if he came, you will go to hell based upon the way you live and the way you think and the way you act and the way you feel. That's right. Because according to the word, That's right. he's going to present to himself a glorious church. Not what? Not having spot. Not, not having what? Not having spot. When there's a spot or a stain, that's sin in your life. That's right. I oh, ask. Yes. Or wrinkle. When there's wrinkle, there's things out of place in the way you think, in the way you feel, in the way you act, or, and the way you believe. That's right. Uh -huh. Or any such thing. Any such thing cover everything else. Mm -hmm. But that it should be what? But that it should be holy. It should be Baptist. It should be holy. It should be non-denominational. That it should be holy. No, it should be Pentecostal. It should be holy. It should be apostolic. It should be holy. It should be UPC. It should be holy. It should be PAW. It should be holy. It should be anything else but this. But that it should be holy. What are you? Mm -hmm. What are you? You hear what the Bible says. But that it should be holy. Now, I'm apostolic. I don't care what you are. That ain't what Jesus said. No, it didn't. Apostolic and holiness is the same thing. You liar. If it was the same thing, I should see both of them in here. That's right. All I see is holy, holy. in here. That's holy right. prophets. Holy God. Holy apostles. He speak by the holy prophets since the world began. That's right. The first apostolic church came out of Rome, Italy. Mm -hmm. It's the Catholic church yeah. that first called themselves apostolic. 
and blind men in America and Europe adapt the same title. That's right. We are the children of God, and we're supposed to be what God is. That's right. Give me Leviticus 19, Leviticus chapter, 19 son. chapter. Glory to God and begin that verse 1. Leviticus 19 if this and message that verse offend one. anybody, good. You come on back this evening, mm -hmm. and we'll pick up where we left off. Levit Listen! Leviticus 19 and verse 1. Follow me I in your Bible. Mm -hmm. Don't I say that's Pastor Jennings preaching. Follow me in your Bible. That's right. Follow me in your Bible. That's Listen. It. Leviticus chapter 19, we're at verse 1. That's what? And the Lord spake unto Moses, No, saying, Gino Jennings spake to Moses. The Lord spake unto Moses. Gino Jennings spake to Moses. The Lord spake unto Moses. People get mad at me all around the world. That Gino Jennings is so mean. He, he think ain't no one right but him. And I think ain't no one right but God. And I'm going to stand on what God stand said. If that. God says, be holy, I challenge everything else that profess another profession. That's right. And I do mean everything else. That's right. Because the word of God said we profess a good profession before many witnesses. Mm -hmm. Now, I have the world as my witness, mm -hmm. and I'm professing holiness throughout every state, every state. country, island, and the world. Mm -hmm. And I'm declaring to the whole world, come back to the holy concepts. That's Ahead. written in God's word. That's it. If you don't want to come back to that, close up church, stay home, and go to hell free. Free. What are you paying your way to hell for? Amen. Why would you pay to put gas in your car just to go to hell? Hmm. If you're going to go to hell, go free. Yeah. Go free. Go free. Don't, don't go broke. Have a, at least some money, some, some change before you die and go to hell. That's right. Listen. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, what is it? Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel. What shall we be? And say unto them, ye shall be holy. All this other stuff started by men. Mm -hmm. Came by men. We believe in sticking to what's written. Ye get, get all the worldly traditions out the church. Get all of it out. That's right. Stick to what's written in the Bible. That's it. When you stick to the old landmark, you stick to what scripture says. That's right. You come on back to the original thing, the old pathway. Old pathway. You better give me the book of Jeremiah book of Jer quickly. Mm -hmm. Come on, son. Amen. I want the book of Jeremiah. Follow me in your Bible. Mm -hmm. Come on, son. Amen. All right, of, come on. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 6 and verse 16. What is it? Thus saith the Lord. Well, who's talking? Thus saith the Lord. I notice they keep, they don't never refer to me. <laughs> no. But yet they get mad at me. That's right. Who's talking? Thus saith the Lord. I let you know uh, God is my refuge. I can duck and hide under him. That's right. Thus saith the Lord. Stand ye in the way. Stand in the way. And see. And see. And ask for the old path. Ask for the old path. Where, where is, is, is the good way? The good way. And walk therein. That's where we're trying to bring everybody back to. That's right. Old paths. All this modern mess and preachers in the Caribbean and in Europe are influenced by these mega preachers they see in America on television. Mm. They want to be like them, so they bring that carnivalism. Yeah. They bring is. that carnivalism That's what it is. right in their congregation, That's right. touch and claim it. There ain't no Bible. No. Bible ain't never told you to touch and claim nothing. No. You going out on a parking lot, praying over a car that somebody else has. <laughs> Here you touching a car and you walking away, that car is mine. And a man or a woman got in it and drove away. You fool. fool. Come on back to the Bible. That's right. Touch and claim it. <laughs> Preachers telling people don't claim your sickness. You fool, you don't have to. Your sickness will claim you. That's right. Preacher come tell you, don't believe you got that bad back. How you going to tell me don't believe it and I'm bent over? <laughs> My back had me bent over. My back is telling me it's bad. Yeah. Don't believe it. I got to believe it. It got me bent over. That's right. Do you see how these preachers throw this sales pitch and the people are so eager to get excited you don't think? That's right. My people love to have it so. What? In Jeremiah chapter 5 and at verse 30. Look at this. Look at this scripture. Jeremiah the 5th chapter. And verse and 30 the 30th and verse. I want you to follow this good. A wonderful. Listen. And horrible thing is committed in the land. Two things happen in the land. Mm -hmm. One. Wonderful. It, and the same thing got one, two titles. That's right. The same event is happening, but it's called wonderful. And horrible. And horrible. Mm-hmm. 
Listen. A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. What is it? The prophets prophesy falsely. Now, this is horrible in the eyes of God, but it's wonderful in the eyes of the people. That's right. Listen now what he's about to read. The prophets prophesy falsely. Hold it. Mm -hmm. False prophet. The word prophet means messenger. False, fake, fraud, phony, not real. A false prophet, in order to detect a false prophet, you have to have knowledge of the book of scripture. That's right. You know, you ever see folks walk through the park with the metal detector? And when that detector go off, <clears throat> there's some metal there. Scriptures is a false prophet detector. Come here, brother. So if a brother is up preaching, you got to have knowledge of scripture and the scripture will evaluate him. Whether he's a false prophet or true prophet. Huh? And when it started going off, he, he believed in three gods. Women preachers. He smoked. He drank. He's, a, he's on the down low. He's a false prophet. False prophet. Now, the ignorant won't know it because they're busy yelling, Amen! Go ahead! Amen! But people that have knowledge will slow down the amen. And the Bible says, Your ear try words as the mouth doeth meat. Don't say amen to what you don't know. That's right. Don't say amen to what sounds right. You say amen to what is right. And the only thing that is right is God's word. Amen. Are you getting what I'm telling you? A wonderful and horrible thing, a wonderful is, horrible committed thing is committed land. in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely. Prophets prophesy falsely and? And the priests bear rule by their means. Wait a minute. The priests bear rule by their mean mean they made themselves a preacher. That's right. They up there on their own. They, they, you know, they had some ham and egg vision. They ate some rice and beans and had too many beans, more than rice. And his pillow was too low and had a dream that he was sitting up in some pulpit yelling and he got up and said, God called and sent me to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. Well, if God called and sent me to preach the gospel, then your message should not contradict God. That's right. Because God don't put lies in the mouths of his messengers. That's right. All of God's messengers run to the Bible for information. Mm -hmm. They rely on Bible for information. That's right. they, did you hear what I just said? Mm -hmm. All of God's messengers, look at what Jesus said. Jesus said, search the scriptures. Search the scriptures. For in them, mm -hmm. yet thank ye have eternal life. That's right. Jesus said they error because they know not mm -hmm. what? The scriptures. scriptures. The, the apostle Paul said whatsoever things were written. A full time is written for our learning that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Your hope supposed to be in the scriptures and nothing else. And that from a child, listen, in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15, listen, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. I don't believe nothing mm -hmm. but what the scripture says. That's it. And I find the scriptures have contradict the wisdom of men for years. That's right. That's why in all our travel, I often question people about things they heard preached through the years. Mm -hmm. Amen. Have you heard it preached that Paul died at Nero's chopping block? The Bible ain't never said that. No. Have you heard it preached that Peter was crucified head down and feet up and said I'm not worthy to be crucified like my Lord? No such crucifixion ever been written in the Bible. That's right. Have you heard there's five minor prophets and five major? The Bible ain't never called no prophet, major or minor. That's right. Have you ever heard that there's 400 years of darkness that fell upon the earth after the last prophet Malachi died? The Bible ain't never said how many years it was. No. The Bible just said darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. Mm -hmm. They have added to the Bible. So what have happened? Amen. Preachers have came from under preachers who have came from under preachers who have came from under preachers. So what happened? Teaching was passed down yeah. from generation to generation and bishops never was questioned. That's right. Because most of the bishops wouldn't let you question them. They look at that as being disrespectful. And I tell people this, anytime you financially support in any church, you got a right to question that man about anything he preached. If he don't want to answer you, don't give him a dime. That's right. Let him get a job and go to work. Mm -hmm. Are you listening? A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. A wonderful horrible. and horrible thing is committed in the land. What's the problem in the land, William? The prophets prophesy falsely. The preachers up just speaking anything yeah. like these prosperity preachers yeah. 
They have no conscience. In America, them devils don't have no conscience. No. When a man can get up and tell this congregation, the Lord told me to tell you to buy me a new jet. Mm. And the people are sucking into raising $65 million and buy him a new jet. That's right. I had someone ask me, what about if a millionaire give you a jet? What would you do with a pastor Jennings? I sell it and build churches. <laughs> with a gospel like this, I don't trust nobody in the cockpit. You may crash land me. <laughs> Huh? Amen. Amen. I'm sitting there about to go somewhere and preaching this thing. I know, head between your knees. Head. No, I ain't, ain't going to tolerate that. No, no, no. No, I just go on coach like I always do. That's right. What is that? The prophets prophesied Lord, falsely. Take God, the prophets prophesied falsely. And the priests and the bear, preacher rule, by bear their rule, means. rule by their means. And my people. Look at what happened to God's people. My people love to have it so. How did you get like this? Amen. How did you get like this where all these gimmicks can take place in the church? A hundred dollar prayer line, a thousand dollar prayer line, a two thousand dollar prayer line. The preacher tell you if you want a super duper blessing, <laughs> five thousand prayer line. Amen. Where do they preachers get this from? Amen. America. That's right. That's Why? Right. They want a Bentley like the American preachers. Yeah. They want a mansion like the American preachers. Yeah. They want their own private boat like the American preachers. That's right. If that's what you want, get a job and go to work and buy it yourself. That's right. Am I right, I said? The prophets prophesy falsely. The prophets. God have never designed church for a preacher to get rich off of it. No. Did you hear me? No, no. God have never designed church for the members to make the preachers rich That's right. and fat like one of the three billy goats. They are waxing fat. What did he say? They are waxing fat. Give chapter and verse, son. Jeremiah chapter 5 and at verse 28. All this is in the Bible. That's right. They are waxing what condition? They are waxing fat. When they get fat, what happens? They shine. <laughs> Amen. Huh? Amen. What is Give chapter and verse again. Jeremiah chapter 5 and at verse 28. What is that? They are waxing fat. After he done got your money, brother, that money. First, he was 165 pounds. <laughs> By the time he got your money over the year, 365 pounds. That's right. And after he get that money, he get fat off of it, then what? They shine. He's all glittery and <laughs> shiny. That's right. Uh-huh. Yeah, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. And when the preacher get fat, pockets get fat, bank account get bigger as a result of fleecing the people, he overpass your deeds, meaning he overlook your wrong. That's right. He won't speak against your wickedness at all. That's right. That's right. Nothing. Why? Especially if you were one of them big contributors to the church. Oh, yeah. I preach the word of God if you give a million dollars an hour. <laughs> I preach the word of God while you got your pen signing your check That's and let right. you know if you don't do right, you and your check is going to hell. That's right. You might as well face the fact you came in the world broken. You going out the same way. Same way. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Yeah, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. Well, false prophet overlooked the deeds of the wicked. He don't pay attention to you with your second wife and your second husband. You go to church. To hear a sermon, God is love. <laughs> and you and that other, and you and Sister Susie's, you got Sister Susie's husband. And you looking at Sister Susie's husband back in your eye. Because that old Jerry Curl head manicured, oh, nail cross wearing devil that mm. posed as your preacher with a hair full of dyed hair. Go ahead. Am I right, I said? That's right. That's right. He don't want to offend you. Overpassed the deeds he of the overpassed. wicked. He overpassed the fact that you gambled. That's right. He overlooked the fact that you wanted the deacons that smoke and drink and lie and swear. He overpassed his son gambling. So he, his gambling son, his lying son, would still direct the choir and play the drums. His pregnant daughter, okay. who ain't married, okay. still would get up on the choir and sing. His homosexual brother will still be on the trustee or be a deacon. Or the sister on the board of directors who's in divorce will still be on okay. the board of directors. He overpass it. Overpass. Because he's afraid to hurt her feelings because she's a loyal member for 40 years. What do God care? That's right. Either you're going to stand for God or stand for the devil. Amen. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? Yeah, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause. They don't judge the cause. The cause of the father. The cause of the father. Yet they prosper. What? Yet they prosper. The preachers today don't care what okay. condition the people are in. That's right. As long as they can live good, eat good, they wouldn't care if you hungry. That's right. If they were hungry and they know it, some of the preachers wouldn't lift a finger. That's right. They'd tell you, have faith. That's right. Believe. Mm -hmm. God will make a way. Yeah. 
Now wait a minute. You mean to tell me if a brother there's someone sitting right there hungry? You ain't got to call the church to raise an offering. No. If you got money in your own pocket, preacher, take it out, buy him some food. If a brother or sister be naked, give me the book of James. In the book of St. James, chapter 2, and at verse 15. Follow me. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, What? Depart in peace. <laughs> be ye warmed and filled. Notwithstanding. You hear this? That's right. That's what the preachers tell them. Amen. Here they are, hungry. Don't have no clothes on their back, mm -hmm. no food in their mouth, mm -hmm. and these good for nothing low lives that pose as preachers tell them what? Depart in peace. Go on in peace. The Lord, the Lord spoke to me and told me to tell you to depart in peace. He karaba salallah salallah. I'm a liar. I'm a liar. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. He ought to add that to his resume of tongues. <laughs> eh? He Amen. ought to add that to his tongue resume. That's right. Go and take God. What did he say? And one of you say <laughs> unto them, Depart one in peace. One say unto them, Depart in peace. Be ye warmed and filled. Be ye warmed and filled. Notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. You don't give them those things that are necessary. What doeth it profit? What doeth profit? That's right. The job of the church is not just to help you spiritually. No. But also meet your need naturally. That's right. That don't mean for members to fleece the church. That's right. That don't mean for people to use the church. Yeah. The Bible said that all things be done decently and in, order. and in order. I had people ask me, well, if someone hungry, Pastor Jennings, would you give them money to buy food? No. I go buy your food. Yeah. Or I get some brothers or sisters to go take you shopping and buy food. Yeah. No, I won't give you the money because you may do that which is unlawful. That's right. You may smoke up your money or drink up your money. That's right. Now, if you're really hungry and I take you to a place to eat, uh, a hungry person don't care what they eat. No. If you're really hungry and I take you to eat, you ain't going to tell me, I don't eat meat. I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> you know, you're not going to do that. No, you're not going to do that. No. No, no. You're just going to eat. That's right. You'll get what I'm telling you. That's right. A hungry person ain't worried about table manners. No. A hungry person got his head down the plate and don't care who look at him. Mm -hmm. All right, son, come on. Back in Acts chapter 20 and verse 28. Everybody all right? Take heed therefore unto yourselves. Pay attention unto yourselves. And to all the flock. And to all the church. Over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. To do what? To feed the church of God. What are, what are our people eating today around the world? Around the world. Candy. Yeah. Sugar. Mm -hmm. Sweets. Sweet, sweets. Messages that make you feel good, but don't do you no good. That's right. Message that's centered around hype. Yeah. People say, well, God is love. I know God is love. God is love. But God do two things. God love and hate. That's right. So a lot of folk, they know about God love, but they don't know it's in the Bible that God hate. That's right. But God says, Jacob, I love. And Esau. Listen. In the book of Malachi chapter 1. Listen. We'll start reading at verse 2. All right. I have loved you, saith the, saith the Lord. I love you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? What? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Uh -huh. Yet I love Jacob. I love Jacob. And I hated Esau. Now, what is it about Esau that he hate? Esau deeds. That's right. So look at your deeds, church, church people, so-called Christians, church goers. Yeah. Look at your deeds. Yeah. The Bible, you better give me the fifth chapter of the Amen. book of Galatians. Yes. Let's look at the deeds of the deeds. flesh. Amen. Amen. Let's look at the deeds of the flesh. Mm -hmm. And I want everybody that's here, you that are watching, to judge yourself according. In the book of Galatians chapter 5. And Follow me. Galatians 5 and verse 19. All right. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? What is it? Adultery. Hold it. Works of the flesh. Preachers done divorced their wives. Got the second one. Got the third one. Give me the tenth chapter of the book of Mark. Mark. Let's bring the teaching of Jesus and make it so plain. <laughs> because these two and three and four wives preachers, they trade in wives like someone trading cars. That's right. Wife swappers. Amen. Huh? Amen. Hey Amen. They, they ought to make a reality program out of that for the preacher. <laughs> Wife right. swappers. That's right. Glory to God. That's right. All right, son. Mark chapter 10, we start at verse 1. Follow me. And he arose from thence and cometh into the coast of Judea. What is it? By the farther side of Jordan. Yes. And the people resort unto him again, and as he was wont, he taught them again. Yes. And the Pharisees came to him and asked him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife 
tempting him. Trying to tempt Jesus. All right. And he answered and said unto them, what did Moses command you? You know, pe pe you know people, they love to jump on Moses. Yeah. But Jesus, was, Jesus, he straightened them out. That's right. What did Moses command? And they said, Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement and to put her away. Yes. And Jesus answered and said unto them, uh -huh. for the hardness of your heart. Wait a minute. What kind of people was Moses dealing with? The heart for the hardness of your heart. That's the kind of people that divorce is for. That's right. People that got a hard heart. I wanted to be good in case I got any women here who's that man spares tire. Amen. If I got any women here and you the second woman. To that man, whoever that man may be, Maybe. you nothing more than a spare tire. That's right. And I weigh him as holding the nail of the message so I can flatten you. <laughs> Amen. Hear you riding on another woman's Riding. husband. That's right. That's right. Get your own man. Mm -hmm. Are you that incompetent? <laughs> Are you that weak that you got to be caught on the rebound? Amen. That goes for if there's any men in the pulpit that got your second ribs. That's right. If you are preaching, got a second wife, you shouldn't be up here. That's right. You're not fit to preach to nobody. No. Why are you listening to the old man? And Jesus answered and said unto them, For the hardness of your heart he wrote you this precept. What is it? But from the beginning of the creation. What? God hath made them male and female. What did God establish? For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. And what? And they twain shall be one flesh. So then they are no more twain but one flesh. Yes. But therefore God hath joined together. Let, let not man, man put asunder. And in the house his disciples asked him again of the same matter. What? And he saith unto them. At verse 11. Follow me. Mark chapter 10 and verse 11. Says what? And he saith unto them, Whosoever shall put away his wife. All right. And marry Listen. whosoever. Listen. Amen. What did the Holy Ghost say? And he saith unto them, whosoever. What about if they're an apostle? Whosoever. Bishop. Whosoever. Pastor. Whosoever. Evangelist. Whosoever. Elder. Whosoever. Deacon. Whosoever. So-called junior bishop. Whosoever. Twin brother. Whosoever. Cousin. Whosoever. Grandpappy. Whosoever. Daddy. Whosoever. Son. Whosoever. Amen. Who speak so in tongue now. <laughs> you can't speak in tongue and your tongue is down the throat of your second husband. That's right. You can't speak in tongue and your tongue down the throat of your second wife. That's right. Huh? Amen. Are you listening to the old man? Whosoever. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Whosoever. Shall put away his wife. Shall put away his wife. And marry another. And marry another. Committeth adultery against her. Whosoever. Wait, wait, wait. You better read. <laughs> Clear up your glasses. Make sure they're nice and clean. Read, read that right because I'm pretty sure I got some adulterous women and mm -hmm. adultery men in here mm -hmm. that claim they're Christians. Amen. Mark chapter 10 and verse 11. Well, my pastor said it's all right, Pastor Jenna. Your pastor is a liar. That's right. Your pastor is a liar. That's right. Tell him, come tell me that. I'll make him lick it up. Amen. I'll make him lick up that damnable rotten teaching. Amen. That teaching dissolved marriages. Yeah. And in fact, that type of teaching want to give him a way out because he don't want his first wife. And now right then, oh, the Lord spoke to me. What did you say, Lord? <laughs> what did you say, Lord? And then he get up. He lost. The Lord said to me that sister, sister Miriam is my wifey, 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 wifey for yes. me. Wifey's for me prophesying. Wifey, he tell him about shut, tell him about shut, tell him about show, bo, bo, show, bo. Yeah, stop showboating. Show, bo, show, bo, show, bo. You old liar. Amen. Your first wife still living. You ain't fit to pastor a cat. That's right. And he saith unto them. Do you hear the Bible? Whosoever shall put away his Jesus wife. Jesus talking. That's right. Give chapter and verse. Mark chapter 10 and verse 11. And he saith unto them. Jesus talking. And he saith unto them. You say you love Jesus. That's right. He saith. You say you love Jesus. Amen. He you saith. say you love Jesus. Yeah. They sing that song. I want to be just like him. Do you? He saith unto them. Do you? Do you? But what did he say? And he saith unto them. What did Jesus say? Whosoever shall put away his wife. Now you judge yourself. Mm -hmm. Whosoever put away his wife. And marry another. This is plain. And you got another. Committeth adultery against her. Whosoever. 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 You see, you see how quiet it is? Very quiet. Huh? Very quiet. Do you see how quiet it is? Amen. 
Whoop, there it is. <laughs> Whosoever, Whosoever shall put away his, his wife. Shall put away his wife. And marry another. And what? Committeth adultery against you her. You lay with that woman. And your first wife is living. Yeah. You're on your way to hell yeah. if you're a bishop. That's right. If you're a pastor. That's right. If there's any women in here who's the second wife to any man in here, yeah. you're in adultery. You're in adultery. Give me the seventh chapter, chapter of the book of Romans. Romans. Amen. And begin at verse one. Romans chapter Nobody seven. tongue talk too much over this. No. There's an old song. Let the people say amen. Let the church say amen. No more adultery today. Amen. 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 Come back to the Bible. Can't get away if you want to. Got to leave the woman alone. Oh, yeah. Amen. Come on back to the Bible. That's right. Come back to the Bible. Amen. Don't give two cents about you joining some church. Jumping around, flapping your adulterous arms and shouting with them adulterous legs and another man is between them Go to ahead. hate your husband. Talk Go back ahead. to me. Go ahead. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, man. Go ahead, brother. Why you listen to the old man? Amen. How are you a Christian? Mm. Riding on another's woman, another man's wife. Yeah. Whoso committeth adultery. Whoso. Give chapter and verse. Now in Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 20. Whosoever commit adultery. With a woman. With a woman. Lacketh understanding. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. In Proverbs 6 and verse 32. Any preacher perform a wedding. And he know that man's wife is living. Or that woman husband is living. That preacher is destroying your soul. Destro that's right. If that preacher was of God, he would not allow such a wedding to take place in God's house. That's right. Who would follow a weak, cheap preacher like that but those who want to be wicked? Amen. I don't care how old you are. Mm -hmm. You got a second husband, you're an old adulteress. That's right. This is old, holy, sanctified preaching. Yeah. Not this modern trash that come out of hell like these Pentecostal organizations in America, PAW and UPC, the twin sisters. Yeah. Believe the same trash, all these bishops and elders and pastors with two and three and four and five wives. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 23 and verse 43. And you in the spirit. You too busy. You ain't got time to get in the spirit. No. Do you hear this? In Ezekiel chapter 23 and verse 43. Follow me. Then said I unto her that was old in adulteries. Amen. It's actually in there? It's actually in here. Then said I unto her that was what? That was old in adulteries. Old grandma in the church. That's right. Coming in with her second husband. Amen. And all her other three husbands, the first, second, third, and she got a fourth one. Thanks to Lord be good to <laughs> me. Right. I got a new husband, Deacon Gressel. <laughs> Lord be good to me. I'm still kicking. You're right. You're right. You're in those hills that's giving your veins swollen, gonna be in hell. That's right. What happened to this type of teaching, folks? Yeah, what happened? What's happened to this type of preaching? What even many sinners was raised up on this preaching. Yes. And that's why the sinner community have no respect for church. And you can't blame them. Because church members and preachers are hanging out at the same club and doing the same thing as the sinner. Amen. Amen. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. The holy book says. Then said I unto her that was old in old adultery. Old in adultery. Will they now commit whoredoms? Wait a minute. Mm. If you committing adultery, what are you doing? Will they now commit whoredoms? Are you, will you continue to commit whoredom? With her? 
Will you? And she with them? Oh, what, 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 what? <laughs> Will they commit whoredoms you, you, with you, her? Yeah, 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 yeah now. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. You that got your second husband and second wife, yeah. you are committing whoredoms. Whoredoms. That's what you're doing. That's right. But I love them. Love your whoredom. That's right. Commit whoredoms. You commit whoredoms. You're not a whore. Stop living like one. That's right. Get your own husband. Yeah. Well, he dead. Then marry. Get married again. Marry again. And leave these other people, husbands and wives, alone. That's right. Am I right, I said? Amen. Am I right, mother? Am I right, mother? Amen. Some of these women old enough to be my grandma, and you upset with me. You upset with me, and you old enough to be my grandmother or mother. And you should be telling these young sisters, get out of these boys' face. But how can you run young boys out the face of your daughters and granddaughters when men is in your house like ticks on the back of a dog? Amen. Talk back to me. That's right. That's right. Oh, I can't believe he said that. Well, I certainly can't believe you act like that. Amen. You see, folks are not used to someone telling them to their face what they are. Yeah. They want to come to church and just touch the neighbor next to you. Say, neighbor, when I count to three, everybody stand up and speak in tongue. Like an auction. Like an auction. That's right. The only thing we want you to touch is that Bible. That's the book. Come on and touch that Bible. That's right. Don't you touch your neighbor. Get your hands off your neighbor. Touch the Bible. Amen. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 6 and verse 29. I was made a preacher. God made me like I am. I've never been in seminary school since I've been black. And I've been black 56 years. That's right. And don't plan on changing colors. That's right. Glory to God, I said at the apostle Peter, let me freely speak unto you. We speak free with no strings attached. I believe what's written. Proverbs, chapter 6 and verse When the fear of God leave church, you can forget it. Anything go on in that church. Anything. When the fear of God leave the pulpit, the preacher going to justify every piece of trash in the world. That's right. The fear of God must come back in church. Amen. Must. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Must I say. Hallelujah. Fear of God got to come back in church. Come back. In the days of the apostles, the Bible said fear came upon every soul. Every soul. Today, <laughs> They don't fear God because the word of God today is all. Many people would do better if they had someone to teach them. That's, right. That's why I don't blame the people. I blame these pitiful things that pose us as preachers. That's right. Brother, the most dangerous position in church is right up here. Yeah. Because you're going to give an account to God for what you told everybody and anybody. Oh, yeah. And if anyone died with the lie in them that you taught them, according to the preaching of the prophet Ezekiel, the blood God going to require at your hands. Your hand. All right, come on, son. What he say? Now in the book of Proverbs chapter 6 and at verse 29. Yeah. So, that he, so he that goeth in to his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent. Wait a minute. If the Bible says whoever touch her won't be innocent, what do you think you are if you marry her? That's right. That's How right. is it, preacher? How is it, church members? You got bishops and deacons and elders and pastors who got their second wife and telling you it's all right. Telling you it's all right. And as a result of following these dumb dogs, Pastor Jennings, I enjoy you, but why you call so many names? Mm -hmm. Give me Isaiah 56 and 10. Isaiah chapter 56 and at verse 10. I want this to be good for those who got offended because I'm not sorry. That's right. I'm just going to call you that again. That's right. But this time, I just want to read it this time. Isaiah chapter 56. All right. Isaiah 56 and verse 10. Come on now. Follow me in your Bible. I know some of you are scared to follow me in the Bible because you're scared you're going to see it in there, but it's in there. It's, mm -hmm. Follow me in your Bible. Isaiah 56 you and verse 10. You might as well follow me in the Bible because the Bible is designed for you to see yourself. That's right. And if you don't want to accept what you see, then stay out of everybody's church because you're in two categories. You're either right or you're wrong. Oh, yeah. You're either on your way with God or you're on your way to hell. Right. Because you bear in mind, you may hate this type of preaching, but you're still going to die one day. Still going to die. And brother, if you reject the counsel of God, the Bible said in the days of John the Baptist that they reject the counsel of God for not being baptized with the baptism of John. If you reject the word of God, you reject the counsel of God. The Bible is not designed to just make you feel good. No, no. And that's the... 
the deception that people have. Man, I'm going to church looking for a word from the Lord. Here it is. Here, here it is. Here it is. That's right. See, they don't consider this a word from the Lord. <laughs> they were a word from the Lord. Oh, no, the preacher got a big hype. Everybody gets running and jump, run around in church. Everybody gets running. Then the preacher got you doing something else. Everybody just jump. You go to church to have aerobics. Amen. You come to church to learn. Amen. What do God want you to know? That's right. And you come to church when you find out what God wants you to know, you will find that you need improvement oh, yes. on self. Amen. Are you listening to the old man? Isaiah chapter 56 and verse 10. Isaiah 56 and 10 says, His watchmen are blind. Hold it. The watchman is the preacher. preacher. The same one whom the Lord made overseer to feed the flock. Mm -hmm. But there's a deficiency that's in the pulpits today. His watchmen are blind. What condition are they in, Williams? They are all ignorant. Ignorant. What? They are, they are all ignorant. All ignorant. Let's see what they feel logical degrees stand for. They are all dumb dogs. That's what that DD mean. That's right. That's he right. bragged he got a DD. He's a dumb dog dumb degree. Dogs. Amen. His approach towards preaching is based upon what he learned from school. That's right. No man is preaching without the anointing. Without the, word. That's right. the book Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And hath anointed me to preach. The Bible is telling you the purpose of the anointing. That's right. If you rely on other scholars, you're not relying on God. Oh. The Holy Ghost make preachers. That's right. Listen. They are all dumb dogs. What? They cannot bark. Hold it. How many of you got dogs for pets? Raise your hand. Anybody got dogs for pets? Do your dogs bark? Yeah. Now, if you got a dog, it's like a silent movie. <laughs> Amen. He'd run up to you and just move his head and nothing come out. I strongly advise you, you put that four-legged thing to sleep. That's right. Because he's no help to you or someone breaking your house. That's right. God styled the preacher as a dumb dog. Dumb Why? The preacher's supposed to be a shepherd. And the shepherd's supposed to maintain the sheep. And whenever wolves come among the sheep, that dog's job is to bark and run that wolf or that fox out. Right. But if he's a dumb dog, he collaborate with the wolf. Mm -hmm. He collaborate with the fox. He go along with the wolf. He go along with the fox and he don't bark, meaning he don't preach or don't say anything yeah. to warn and alert God's people, which is God's sheep. That's right. Listen. They are all dumb dogs. Dumb dogs. They cannot bark. What, what, what other condition they have? Sleepy. Oh, Sleeping. lazy thing. Mm -hmm. Sleeping. How much sleep they like? Lying down. How bad? How bad? Loving to slumber. Loving. How kind of dog is it? Yeah, they are greedy dogs. How greedy? Which can never have enough. I told you. Amen. $500 prayer line, $5,000 prayer line, $20,000 prayer line, and you look at these suckers on television down here who tell you, if you want a great blessing, put your hand on the television. The only thing you get from that television is a warm hand. Yeah. Preacher tell you, if you're watching me now, get a piece of paper, get a piece of paper, and trace your hand. Look how a fool he made you. Here you a grown woman, and you tracing your hand like you in kindergarten, like a fool. Amen. And you trace your hand and then sit there and cut it out. This man making a sucker out of you. He got you believing cutting out hands with arts and craft is going to connect you to Jesus. That's right. And then he piled a bunch of paper up on a table talking about his letters. I'm going to lay my hands on these letters and we all going to touch and agree. And somebody come in your house and think you lost your mind because you're standing in front of a television. <laughs> my Lord, my Lord. I want to wake you up. That's right. The Bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Hitting his face up. That's right. And this is the condition of the people. I refuse to go along to get along with anybody. Amen. Only one I want to go along with is God. That's it. And God only. That's right. That's why I stand firm and bold. I cannot be bought. I've been offered millions of dollars many times. I've been offered other bishops, church organizations, and I tell all of them, I'm a builder. Yeah. 
God make me a builder. I don't, if you don't want me to have your organization, keep it. What do I care? Right. God make me a builder. We build people. That's right. And we use the mortar of the scripture. That's right. Wonderful. Are you listening to the old man? Amen. The Bible says what? Yea, they are greedy dogs which greedy. can never have enough. Never. Never. What else? And they are shepherds that cannot understand. How you don't understand the boss is wrong? Amen. You understand it. You just don't want to give up that second rib you got. That's right. Huh? That's right. But Pastor Jennings, me and my wife didn't get along. That ain't God's problem. That's yours. Well, what do you expect for me to do? I expect for you to do the seventh chapter of the book of Romans. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. This is what I expect for you to do, men and women. Romans I want you to hear this, Mr. and Mrs. Christian. Romans chapter 7, we start at verse 1. Mr. and Miss Christian, you that say you're a Christian, you know you read your Bible and when Sunday come along or when it get close to the weekend, you turn your radio off rap and R&B and start changing to gospel music right. so you can, you know, set yourself up for, to get spiritual by the weekend. You know, you don't know, smoke and drink and gamble and party Friday night out there just shaking wig all loose, and shaking your hair. Your old lips is all red like Jezebel and got somebody else's hair on and got pearls and bees and ankle chains. And here you order to be my grandmama with an ankle chain. If you're not a hoe, stop wearing the label of one. That's right. Ankle chains and being holy don't mix. No. Let us just face the facts. The facts. Church and looking like a prostitute is not the same. No. And when these weak, poor excuses as preachers tell you, God ain't looking at you, I will ask him. Why did the Bible says in 11 chapter 1 Corinthians, it's a shame for a man to have long hair and ask him, is long hair outward or inward? Yeah. That's right. Old as you are with your hair dyed, <laughs> dye your hair. Your roots is all gray. <laughs> hair all, here you is in your 60s and 70s and hair jet black, you old liar. That's right. Because the truth come out. The truth come out, I say. Yeah. Get out there in the bad rain and that dye just come down their face. All black dye dripping off. <laughs> That's the devil out of hell. That's right. That's right. Be the way God made you. God made you. Are you listening? That's right. What did the Holy Ghost say? Romans chapter 7, we start at verse 1. All right. No, you're not brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. And I, I, I want to go to makeup because, and the question was asked to me to please give make Bible for makeup. And I want to show you this in... Uh, Jeremiah, the fourth chapter and 30th verse, after we read this. We read this. All right, read quick. No, you're not, brother. Get chapter and verse. Romans chapter 7, and we're at the first verse. And we're still working on having spare tires. Mm -hmm. No, you're not, brethren, for I speak I to you. I know them many of you still brought your, brought your pump with you to pump your second wife and your second husband back up, but amen. Amen. We're we still going to flatten it. <laughs> pump it back up. That's right. Go ahead, Pastor. But when that air come out, you're going to hear it. Adultery. <laughs> it's going to go right out. <laughs> Uh, spread right. out, I said. That's right. It's gonna go right out. Go right out of him. <laughs> you got your second husband, your second wife. I'm telling you to your face. You no more Christian than a dog got eight legs like a spider. Mm. You are being knocked up by another woman's husband. Yeah. You are being ridden upon by another man's wife. That's right. You no more Christian than I smoke weed. Amen. And I don't smoke weed. <laughs> You're not a Christian. No. Mm -mm, the Bible called you an adulteress, an and we're about to read it right now. Romans 7 and verse 1. Listen. Know you not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the I law. I speak to them that know the law. How that the law hath dominion the over law man as power long over as he liveth. man as long as he lives. For the woman which hath an husband. The woman that got a husband. Is bound by the law to her husband. How long is she bound by to her husband? So long as he liveth. But what? But if the husband be dead. If he went blind. If the husband be dead. Lost his hair. Be dead. Lost his teeth. Be dead. In jail. Be dead. Went to war. Be dead. Became a Democrat. If the husband be dead. A Republican. Be dead. Work for Parliament. Be dead. Liberal. Dead. What gotta happen? But if the husband be dead. Dying. Dead. How many here don't know what dead is? Raise your hand. Amen. How many who don't know what dead is? Don't know what it is. Somebody had their hand up. Hey, no, 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 what that? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now I want you to get this. But if the husband be dead, you, I'm telling you, yeah. this is God's law, and I don't care how fine you think you are. I don't care how much money he make. Your dignity should outweigh the dollars that man stuffing down your bra. Go ahead, brother. 
Am I right, I said? That's right. That's right. Your dignity and self-respect should outweigh dollars. Yeah. You can't pass up money. Mm. You can't pass up a decent car. You got mm. a choice. Pass it up or go to hell. That's right. You're going to burn. You're going to burn. And while you burning, God going to bring this message right back to your mind while you falling and hollering and screaming in the heat of hell. That's right. Listen. For the woman which hath an husband. The Bible speaks plain. The woman got God. And then some folk get the attitude. Hmm, I don't care what you say. I don't care what you say. Say what you want. I'm going back to my man and I'm going to ride him all I want. Listen. You're not hurting me. No. You ain't hurting me. No. Ride, baby, ride. <laughs> That's right. You ain't hurting me. When that mailman bring a light bill to your house that say $5,000, you don't need to run down the street cussing him out. You don't want to burn the electric. That's right. When you find yourself burning in an everlasting lake of fire, you and your second or third husband, yeah. this message is going to judge you in judgment. Oh, yes. You can hate me all you want. And if there's any preacher, in fact, if there's any of you got a pastor, who justified divorce, you're following a liar. Yeah. I mean, he's a liar. Yeah. If he's your daddy, your yeah. daddy is a liar. Yeah. We're going to do it like the Bible said, or stop faking playing church. That's right. What did the Holy Ghost say? For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband. The so woman that have a husband is bound by the law to her, her. husband. Her, her not somebody else. Her husband. How long? So long as he liveth. What? But if the husband be dead. Short. Dead. Amen. On a respirator. But if the husband be dead. Death row. Be dead. Well, if Pastor Dennis Bosey beat me up, then the Bible justifies separation. That's right. Can I separate? Yes. Can I divorce? No. No. Give me separation in the seventh chapter of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and we're at verse 10. Follow me. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but Look the Lord. Look at all this Bible. Give chapter and verse again. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and we're starting at verse 10. Chapter and verse again. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and we're at the 10th verse. Chapter and verse again. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and I'm at verse 10. Follow me in your Bible. And unto the married I command. Unto the married I command, yet not, not I, yet, but the Lord. Yet the Lord. But the Lord. Uh -huh. Let not the wife depart from her husband. Don't let the wife apart from the husband but but and if she depart now the Lord knew everybody ain't gonna stay together he knew that so when people do leave he implement another law what you should do while you're gone but and if she depart if you do leave let her remain unmarried that ain't what the bishop said no your bishop said that if you leave you can get another one then you leave them but that ain't what Bible says but and if she depart let her remain unmarried no go let her get another man let her remain unmarried what well, well, suppose she get hot and want a man what should she do or be reconciled to her husband you can't live Billy you can't leave Billy and go get Paul no well, Pastor Jim, I can't stay to myself then go back, go back. to Billy that's right and leave Paul alone. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. You women in the churches that are trying to move in on bishops and on preach and on uh, women who are married to pastors, women in the church try to move in on their husband. Yeah. No sister in the church should be flirtatious in the face of a preacher. That's right. If a sister in the church is flirtatious to the preacher, then the preacher wife got the right to step to you and put you in your place. Amen. Emma. Amen. And if the preacher wife stepped to you and put you in your place, then the preacher should not get upset with his wife. That's right. What you gonna get upset with your wife for when she's doing her job? Amen. She got the right to lay you out. Yeah. Talk back to me. Amen. Bible still at all things be done decently and in, order. and in order. You don't walk around the church like the bishop ain't got no wife. That's right. You respect the fact he got a wife. Yeah. And act like he got a wife. Amen. Go ahead, man. Am I right, I said? Go ahead. Mm. If Bishop Ferguson having a council meeting, you don't sit on his lap. No. Sit in a chair. That's right. 
You ain't got to be leaning all over him and your breast assistance is hanging. He ain't no baby. He don't need to be breastfed. Go ahead, brother. Am I right? Go ahead, man. Are you listening to what I'm talking? Go ahead. I believe firmly in church order. That's right. This is judgment work. This ain't no game. No way. Go ahead. If you ain't gonna do it right, close up church. Yeah. Close it up. There's a place that people should be in. That's right. And the preacher's supposed to keep you in that place with that Bible. That's right. That's why a lot of folk is angry with me. I believe in putting folks in their place Please. with that Bible. Oh, yeah. Are you listening? Amen. Amen. Women that are sick in the hospital or sick in the house, preacher got a wife, sister want prayer, want you to come to the house, take your wife with take you. Take your wife with you. Well, my wife, she's ill and can't go. Take some old mothers with you. Mother's too old for you to lust after. That's right. Why, we, why Pastor Jennings? Because if a sister is ill, it is wise that mothers go because the sister may be indecent in her home. Right. So the mother should go in the house before the preacher. The preacher will wait outside. That's right. Help the sister or the mother get decent first. Then let the preacher know. Come in. The sister shouldn't have to close her blouse while the preacher is there. That's right. The Bible said, let all things. This is doctrine. That's right. Let all be things done be decently. done decently and, and in order. order. And, and order. God don't care who you are, and I sure don't. That's right. Did you hear the Bible talking? Still in 1 Corinthians 7 and at verse 10. And unto the married I command, yet not I but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. But and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or, or be reconciled to her husband. No, if you leave your husband, get another man. Let her remain unmarried. Unmarried. No, get another man. Let her remain unmarried. So from pulpit down, if you preachers or deacons <clears throat> or choir singers and cousins and all that, you got your second wife and second husband? Second wife. You thought you was a Christian, didn't you? Mm. Oh, you know Christian. No. <laughs> you ain't like Christ. No. Christ don't commit adultery. That's right. You can go to church now. Go to church and jump and shout all you want. All you want. But this message is going to plague you in your dream. Yeah. Every time Melvin crawl up on your bed and get up on you, you can try to shake this out of your head. Yeah. And you're going to hear the gospel blast in your ear. He's not yours! <laughs> hmm? This word going to hit the man low anatomy. Mm. Make it drop. <clears throat> <laughs> huh? She's not yours! That's right. Holy and sanctification. Yeah. You don't want to be holy? Don't waste your time and go to nobody's church. Don't waste your time. Go back to the book of Acts. Everybody all right? Yes, back on Acts 20 and verse 28. Take heed therefore. So, before, you, before you go there, let's get, uh, Jeremiah. I, let's get Jeremiah. I want to show about the makeup. About the makeup. Because somebody asked me to please prove by the Bible that mm -hmm. makeup is wrong. Jeremiah chapter 4, we're starting at verse 30. And then I want the book of Kings. Right. And let's show you the woman that made it. That's right. The, the what? That's right. All right. Jeremiah chapter 4, we're at verse 30. And when thou art spoiled, what wilt thou do? That's the problem. People are spoiled rotten in church. Yeah. It's like some inexperienced young parents who let their children run all across the furniture, go in the refrigerator, hands unwashed, but then when that same child go to grandma and grandpa's house, grandma and grandpa don't play that. They tell you, sit down. That child act totally different when they go to grandma's house. Yeah. All, that, all the mother got to do is tell them, look, if you don't act right, I'm going to tell your grandmother. Uh oh. <laughs> Why? There's something that grandma brings to the table. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. Discipline left church. It is. It have left church. Discipline have left church, order have left church because men have loved money so much. The love of money have made them weak and scared to stand up for God. Amen. What kind of demon preachers that will stand up for adultery but won't stand up for God. That's right. That's right. Go back to his church. Well, you heard what Pastor Jennings said. 
and we just got different views on it. It ain't what Pastor Jenny said. My name ain't Romans. <laughs> no. Because he didn't read the scripture, you can get rid of your wife if she fornicate. All right, give me the 19th chapter mm -hmm. of the book, book of Matthew. Matthew. Let's read it. Matthew. I want to block them before they move that pawn there. That's right. I want to checkmate them with Bible. That's right. Huh? Before they get that pawn and that rook and that knight. Amen. That's I want right. to cross over Amen. and move with Bible. With Listen. Matthew chapter 19, we're we'll right at verse 9. Listen. And I say unto you. Uh oh, God talking again. I say unto you. I say to you. Whosoever shall put away his wife. For what? Except it be for fornication. What happened? And shall marry another, committeth adultery. Look at that scripture closely. Whosoever. Whosoever shall put away, shall his, put away his wife. Except it be for fornication. She's talking about two kind of women here. It ain't a married woman under the sun commits fornication. A married person commits adultery. That's right. There ain't nobody in the divorce court because the husband committed fornication. No. It's adultery. That's right. So the married person that commits fornication is dealing with the ex-spouse wife. That's right. Not the one you married to. Married. It's the ex-spouse wife that commits fornication. Yeah. Not the one you say I do and you got that license. That's right. Well, Pastor Jenna ain't going to tolerate my man cheating on me. You don't have to. You can separate. Separate. But you can't marry again until he dropped dead. Right. And you can't speed up his death. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is Bible. Oh, yeah. You got two and three sets of families from two and three men. Yeah. Two and three women. But that first man, according to the Bible, He's your husband. That's he right. ain't no good. You're still married to a no good man. That's right. And he preaching the Bahama Islands, preach otherwise. He's a liar Amen. out of hell. I don't care if he's your slap, happy grandpappy. Amen. The Bible speaks plain. And I say unto you. I say to you. Whosoever shall put away his wife. What? Except it be for fornication. And do what? And shall marry another, committeth adultery. Now, anytime you marry a woman that's already married, you commit adultery. You commit adultery. But if you engage to a woman and she step out and go somewhere and commit an act of fornication, you ain't got to marry her. No. That's the fornicated wife. That's right. She got the title wife. Like Mary had the title wife and Joseph had the title husband before they got married. Before. That's right. All right, let's go back to where you were so back, I can knock off. Back in Jeremiah chapter 4 and at verse 30. All right, let's get this makeup business that people are asking me about down here. Jeremiah 4 and verse 30. Folks and when, want to know is anything mm -hmm. wrong with putting a little rouge over your eyes and paint over your lips and <laughs> making your cheeks a little bit blushy. <laughs> that's right. And say, that's beautiful. No, it ain't. Beauty is obeying God. Yeah. Well, my husband wants to see me like this. Suppose you get sick and can't wear it. Then what? That's right. Your husband should love the real deal. That's right. Not artwork. Amen. Now let's get Bible for this. Jeremiah chapter 4 and at verse 30. What? And when thou art spoiled, what, what wilt what thou do? What you going to do when you're spoiled? Though thou closest thyself with crimson. And then what? Though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold. Look at your gold now. Toes all pierced. Nose all pierced. Breasts is, is, is all pierced. That's right. Amen. These old dumb ignorant men got their nose pierced, ears pierced. The Bible's dealing with this. That's right. What else? Though thou rinnest thy face with painting. And in vain. Wait a minute. No, it looks good. In vain. It's pretty. In vain. It's pretty. In vain. Five and six and seven and ten year old girls. Lipstick, fake eyelashes, got their eyebrows all arched. That's right. What's wrong with these parents, what they doing to their children? That's right. Do you hear this in vain? In vain shalt thou make thyself fair. Thy lovers will despise thee. They will seek thy life. Give me the book of Kings. Now in the book of 2 Kings. In the book of 2 Kings, chapter 9. Follow me in your Bible. Amen. Come on, son. Jezebel was up in the tower, and there was a prophet that came in by the name of Jehu. Now, when Jehu came in town, he had a charge from God to kill all the house of Ahab. 2 Kings chapter 9. Listen. And at verse 30. Says what? And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, what happened? Jezebel heard of it. Now, who in here never heard of Jezebel? Everybody heard of old Jezebel. I don't care what country I go to, everybody hear about Jezebel. Amen. 
Old mothers used to tell their sons, stay away from that girl. That girl looked like Jezebel. Stay away from her. But mom, I told you, you better stay away from that old Jezebel. That's right. Jezebel wasn't just a look. It was a look and a conduct. Yeah. Listen. 2 Kings 9 and at verse 30. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face. Makeup. That's right. That's all makeup is. Face paint. Face paint. Even men doing it now, you fool. Yeah. Men. Have you noticed men get more feminine? Preachers now want to hide their bumps. Makeup. They got hair makeup. It's called dye. Dye. Bible say honor the hoary hair. What's wrong with your hair being gray? That's God right. say honor it. And what you trying to prove? Amen. So Pastor Jennings, I, I just want to look young. You old fool, get that mess out of your head. That's right. Honor the hoary hair. Honor it. If God made you that way, God made you that way. Yeah. Why is it? Men and women, you want your hair to be orange, green, yellow, burgundy, lavender, pink. That's right. What is wrong with the human family? That's right. And when they hear me preaching, well, what's wrong with it, Pastor Jennings? Everybody doing it. You should be a leader, not a follower. Right. My young men, you want your hair long like women? Ain't no man should be walking around. No man. Oh, man. Ain't no man should be doing that. No. A man bun. <laughs> Ain't no man should have a ball on his head and a rubber band around his wife's bobby pins. That's right. What's wrong with these men? That's the right. The Bible says it's a shame a for a man to have long, long hair. Long hair. When you don't know, you don't know, but it's my job to feed the church of God. That's right. Hear me? And when, and when Jehu was come to Jezreel, what is it? Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face. She, wait, she put makeup on? And tied her hair. She, she tied her hair, got and, her hair all fixed up. And looked out at a window. And what did Jehu do? And as Jehu entered in at the gate, she, he, he said. He had said what? Had Zimri, she had, said. She said. Had Zimri peace. Had Zimri peace. Who slew his master. Yes. And he lifted up his face to the window. Jehu looked up and looked at Jezebel and said what? And said, who is on my side who? No. He said, you fine. Who is on my side who? No. Jehu said, ooh, girl, look at you. And said, who is on my side who? What else did Jehu say? And they looked out to him two or three eunuchs. And what did he say? And he said, throw her down. Throw her out the render. So they threw her down. That's what I want to do with your makeup kit. Throw it down. Throw it down. Love the way God made you. That's it. Whatever complexion God gave you, love it. That's love right. the hair God made you. Don't go to Walgreens. Don't go to Walmart. Don't go to Rod Aid. Don't go to Amazon ordering you somebody else's hair. Yeah. And then you can't even scratch your head. Pastor Jenner, you don't have no love. I preach Bible. God is love. God Bible is love. The whole human family been spoiled so bad, they forgot what preaching was. That's right. They think preaching is, ain't the Lord good? Aha. What goes up aha, must come down. Aha. Mm -hmm. That's right. Aha. They ain't preaching, that's noise. That's right. That's a pig trying to stay alive before he gets slaughtered. Amen. Kill the pig. Amen. Roast him. God made me like he made the Apostle Paul. Yes. I am not out to make friends. The fear of the Lord got to come back in church. That's right. It got to come back. Yeah. When it come back, your soldier splits up in your dresses and your skirts. Stop wearing these mini skirts advertising your naked body. Stop having your clothes drop down advertising your breasts. Then pretend like you hiding it when a man look. You don't want a man to look? Dress your turkey. That's right. Dress it, I say. Amen. Got your daughters out here with, with a dress this big and a blouse this big. Yeah. And all these old perverts right in church. Right in church. 
You got old perverts that come right to church, not for the Bible, women shopping. Women shopping. Dresses and skirts no shorter than my jacket, and you up there trying to shout. <laughs> Brother, see you kicking your legs up there. He always act like he's dropping something. Uh. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Are you listening to the old man? Amen. Bahamas? The Lord wiped out Freeport. And the Lord wiped out some of your other islands. The Lord proved to you, you don't own nothing. That's right. Your house ain't yours. Your car ain't yours. Your mama, your daddy, your children ain't yours. You will be a fool to look at the destruction that God brought here. And you still become arrogant and self-righteous in your ways. That's right. He's burning down California now. Yeah. California is burning. Millionaires' mansions are burning. Amen. You see, God don't care if you're rich or poor. Nigga, you came in the world. Nigga, you shall have returned. You judge. Whose right. side you going to be on today? That's right. The Lord's side? Or the side of your bishop? If you're going to be on the Lord's side, you're going to have to come back to scriptures. Let's close out with Acts 2, 38. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Follow me. Then Peter said unto them, repent. If you claim you're a Christian and you haven't been born again like what he about to read, you're not saved. Yeah. If you bow your head and raise your hands and was told to accept Christ as your personal Savior, you've never been saved. If you pray to send us prayer and a preacher say, anybody want to be saved, come on up, hold the preacher's hand. And there's a few elders and you hold their hand and they repeat a sinner's prayer. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Wash me, cleanse me, white as snow, come into my heart. And then the liar tell you, I'm saved, my friend. You're not saved. That's right. There ain't no sinner's prayer in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Well, Pastor Jim, I went to a Catholic church and the priest put water on me. Once you throw it on, you throw it back on him. Amen. Bible ain't tell you be sprinkled by some priest. No. Well, I was baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The Bible never said be baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The Bible said be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I'm a son, I'm a husband, I'm a father. But if I tell you to do something in my name, you're not going to say son, husband, and father. You're going to call the name Jennings. Right. The name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is Jesus, and he's the Christ. He's the Christ. Matthew 28, 19 was fulfilled in Acts 2, 38 when the Bible spoke plain. Then Peter said unto them, repent. All right, Bahamas. This is what you got to do from pulpit down. Repent. You got to get be sorry about your wrong. You got to have a repentant heart. Feel guilty. Yeah. Repentance is not just getting up saying, I'm sorry. When a person is truly repentant, their heart is convicted. That's right. You feel that conviction in your heart about your wrong. Amen. What is it? Repent and be baptized. Who? Every one of you. How? In the name of Jesus Christ. How much of the Bahamas got to do it? Every one of you. And how must it be done? In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, what? For the remission of sins. Remission means removing. That's how you get your sins washed away, Mr. and Miss Thing. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says you shall receive. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises unto you and to your children and to them that are far off, even as many the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words. Did he testify, did he testify and exalt, saying, what shall we do? Save yourselves. No, wait on your husband. Save yourselves. No, wait and see what your pastor going to say. Save yourself. How much? From this untoward generation. Save yourself. How many here want to burn in hell? Let me see you. Oh, nobody want to go to hell. No, folks say, ain't no church ever asked me that. Well, I just want to know. Amen. You don't want to go to hell? Nobody don't want to go to hell? Come on. You mean to tell me you got your second wives and second husband and you don't want to go to hell over it? <laughs> You're living together, not married. You're smoking, you're drinking, you're gambling, you're party, And you don't want to go to hell? Don't somebody, don't you want to go to hell, Williams? No. Huey, don't you want to go? Matt, you don't want to go? No. Why not? <laughs> it's hot enough here in the Bahamas, isn't it? Hot enough now. If you want to escape hell, repent. Repent. Don't waste your time to get angry with me. I brought you what's in that Bible. Yes, you did. You got to come up to it. That's right. Is it truth? Yes. yes. Many people would do better if someone would have 
told them. It's enough to make you angry when you find out these preachers been lying and playing with you and plucking your pocketbook for years. A lot of them know this stuff is in the Bible, but they don't want to offend you. I'd rather offend you than offend God. That's right. Repent of your sins. Anybody want to be right today? I want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ according to the Bible. Stand on your feet if you want to be right with God. Stand on your feet if you want to be baptized the right way. Come on. Wonderful. Sister, sister that are standing, go right to the back, to that sister right back there. All right. We thank God for you. Let this word sink in your heart, sink in your ears, because you will never get away from it. All right, we're going to turn the service back in the hands of Bishop Ferguson. can't stop the word, so the only thing you can do is accept the word. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Um, just before we dismiss you, we have with us uh, today Pastor Dr. Ari Kuba. He is the pastor of Mission Baptist Church, and we also have um, Ms. Ruby Ann Darling, a former member, a former member of Parliament. Ms. Dallin, please stand. Thank you for coming. We're going to ask Pastor Cooper to bring brief remarks. Thank you, Pastor Humphrey Ferguson, for allowing us to greet you today in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are grateful to our visiting leader who has fed us immensely, immensely with uh, the word of God. We are less than about, I would say, 200 feet, 250 feet from here. And I deemed it that we should not be too close and not to be nourished with such a special messenger. And so I want to extend our heartfelt uh, welcome to you, sir. Thank God, boys. To the Bahamas. And I feel so privileged to, to be here because the word of God is still swift, still sharper, no matter what the world thinks, than any two-edged sword. And so continue to proclaim the good news we remember this church from way back yonder with uh, the Reverend Renville Smith uh, working in this community. And, and many years ago, Pastor Humphrey came, Ferguson, and he has remained stable, faithful, and dutiful to the body of Christ even though he might have had opportunities to establish churches elsewhere, there's such a thing about this area that he considers as a very prime and strategically located place to proclaim the news of the kingdom of God. So we greet you today. We have a few. Uh, we had a wonderful service today but I wanted to challenge a few of our members to, to join us. I think anything that is positive and spiritually uh, 
vital for the building up of the body of Christ, we should partake of it. And um, I told them to just put on the full armor. I told them to put on their, take their hats off and put their helmets on because they would be hearing the word of God. And so a few came, and I think some already left, but those who are from uh, Mission Baptist Church, would you kindly stand? Wonderful. And if you have gotten the message, and if the message has hit your souls, would you sit down? So lastly, I just want to share the need with you for us to always work together. And I could not allow this opportunity to pass without coming to pay my respect to Pastor Ferguson and to thank him for the great work that he is doing in our community. Uh, by now, all of you should know that he is the rich young ruler, Pastor Ferguson. Uh, God has blessed him in a special way that he could build the kingdom of God sacrificially without having to, like so many today, politically compromise or spiritually compromise their standards just for filthy lucre. But he gives unselfishly in enriching our community, in establishing this edifice to the honor and glory of God. And we pray that the Lord would send forth laborers into the vineyard, other supporters, that he would live under an open heaven so that he can join in with other leaders in this local community to point people back to the way of the cross. Thank you very much for this opportunity and welcome Pastor Jennings. You are very controversial in this country at this time. I came to know of what's taken place this week because I am a part of the Christian Council. And based upon the message that was preached, some video went across, and the whole community said, oh no, this message is, is too touchy. But I have come to validate the fact that in this place, in this location today, we do have a man of God. And I, I, and as a young man, all of us might have at that time had the opportunity to grow up under the preaching of Bishop S. McDowell. Shelton from Apostolic Square in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, and um, such powerful messages that he sent forth from the apostolic perspective that yet remains with us today. And I was pleased to know of such a new and still youthful a uh, leader such as you have, God has raised to carry forth the apostolic message from the word of God to our generation. I am pleased to have been here. Thank you. Yes. Um Pastor Cooper, his father and I were very good friends. 
many, many years ago when I just began a little building there, it's the non Jews Burial Society. And his father told me that after a mission started many, many years ago, and every now and again, his father will stop and we will have a good conversation. And he allowed me to know that that's where mission started, in the same building where we came from. Our theme for this conference is that we uh, must um, keep the standard, stand our ground. And over the years, we have been doing our best to stand our grounds, and we still intend to stand our grounds. It doesn't make any difference where the forces comes from. We will stand our grounds. The word of God is true, and it can be tolerated. It is God all by himself, and no matter who or where or what, the word of God will stand. And we have a mission, we have a mandate, and that mission is to preach truth throughout the length and breadth of the Bahamas and the length and breadth of the world. It doesn't make any difference where we go. We will preach the truth and we will stand for the truth. There is only one truth and there is only one God and our God is holy. We have, the Lord has helped us to uh, remodel this church and I recall when things were stuff. As a matter of fact, I spoke about it maybe two or three weeks ago at the other church. And I told the congregation then, I was so down one day and I stood on the outside of the church, standing there, feeling so depressed. I saw a white car coming down the street. I thought it was my son, but it was Sister Ruby and Allen. She stopped there and she said to me, Pastor Ferguson, you're doing a good job. And I looked at her and I said, um, you don't know how discouraged I am. That's what I was thinking. But then she turned around and she read the sign on the church. The sign says, a mission, a church with a mission in its heart. And she pulled off. And I turned around and I read the sign. And I remember the morning when that thought came to me that this will be a church with missions in its heart. And I was so encouraged. And to see her stepping into service to, uh, this, a while ago, I was certainly pleased that uh, you're here with us today. And everyone from Mission, we are glad to have you. And we are happy, uh, Pastor, that the Christian Council, I'm glad that you represent them. I'm glad about that. But tell them for us that we intend to stand for the truth. Yes. We intend to preach the word. Under any circumstances, tell them we will stand our grounds. We are not, we will not deviate, we will not bend, we will not go back and front, but we will stand firm, firm on the word of God. Because after all, when everything goes down, the word of God will stand forever. And I intend, when everything goes down, I intend to be standing yeah. on the word. Amen. Praise God. So we're happy for every one of you in the service today. And I know it's running late. Service begins. Uh, we will begin service this evening at 7.30 because I know you have to go out and return. And so we're happy for every one of you. Now, those of you who got baptized uh, during this week on Wednesday, we would like to meet with all of the newly converts on a Wednesday evening right here at 7.30. Let everyone stand. Praise God. It's so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him by his just to Rest upon his promise, 
just to know the Lord. Oh, Jesus, how I trust him. Shake hands and be friendly.